Pat, so, have you ever heard that perspective before? What he's saying is is contradictory to basically what every American has ever which known. Part, which part? The part specifically about World War II. We've been, you know, the greatest generation is the name that everyone uses for the parents of the baby boomers. The, they, they fought in World War II. You know, this one, my, one fifth west, four fifth east, the role Russia played that cost them. Is that, is that what you're talking Precisely. about? Precisely. And, yeah. and ultimately, we've been raised that the greatest generation of all time is the World War II generation. You know, they... they baby boomer? They raided the... No, the parents of the, of the baby boomers. They raided yeah. the streets of... Nor, uh, the shores of Normandy. And this is the epitome of American culture and exceptionalism. And your father fought in this war. What kind of backlash do you get from your father or your father's, you know, constituency, his age, from what you're saying about World you've War II? That's a very key question. And yeah. I, I Would you mind just pulling this closer to you? Because I, yeah. I mean, you can even move that. I'm saying you can grab that. I can, like this? You mean, or yeah. you could grab You're this. saying to move the mic a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, okay, just so we can it. hear. Yeah. Because yeah. what you're saying is very important, and it's yeah, contradictory it to anything we've ever heard about America. It's a great question. Well, well thank you, Adam. But... The, the, the concept of the greatest generation is mythology again. It was invented, as far as I know, by a Ambrose, Stephen Ambrose, who's a, a certain kind of historian, very patriotic. I believe it was Ambrose. But certainly Tom Brokaw, who uh, interviewed me, uh, uh, made also, uh, I remember him mm-hmm. using that expression. He wrote a book about it. Mm-hmm. Tom Legendary Brokaw. Journalist. Be, now, Tom oh, Brokaw is a very nice, li- liked, very much liked on the air, but he's mm-hmm. not a very bright man, in my opinion. Oh. He interviewed me on the Kennedy assassination for an hour and a half in the 2013, the 60th anniversary. I talked to him very cogently as I'm talking now for an hour and a half. He, he, he they, when they, when they, when they released the, uh, the documentary, it was, the, I was there for 60 seconds and it was very superficial. That's the kind of treatment you get in me, major media in the United States. You know, they cut to the commercial. You can't have any serious discussion on the air. This is, this is so bad. This is part of our problem. We don't think about things. We don't discuss both sides of an equation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the greatest generation is, is a lie. And they, they point to George H.W. Bush. Oh, he was, he was a fighter pilot. He, he was a heroic man, yes. Mm-hmm. But well, what, look what happened. He goes to war in Iraq on the flimsiest of reasons. And the, the, there's a lot son. of doubts about that 1990 war. And then we can go into that, but not here. Uh, and he's, they, he was made a giant, a lion of that generation. But he's not. He's not. He was a, he was a man who did his job in World War II. And it was a tough war, uh, no question about it. But a lot of those people, if you go and talk to the actual people who fought in the war, will tell you another story completely, uh, how filthy and dirty it was and how, sh- I won't use, it was an obscenity. It's it, a podcast. It, you can, you can it speak was, freely. Uh, it was not a pretty war. Yeah. It was... No one's proud of their service. You know, when they, uh, civilians are killed all the time, all kinds of cowardice, all kinds of infighting among the troops. You, uh, the, the truth of war is that. And so we, we have some kind of, you know, the problem. With, now we've sanitized, since Vietnam, we've sanitized the news about war, right? You, you get embedded. You have to have journalists embedded safely with the military in order to report anything. You're not allowed to show the bodies coming back. <laughs> they, they hide them. Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we, we, we've sanitized, tried to sanitize the war. Now we're not even using troops. We're trying to use proxy nations and send their armies to fight. So I, I, we have to re-examine that uh, attitude that we have, that we're number one. We have to learn to live with other nations, learn to cooperate. We don't have to be the most dominant nation in the world. I think we'd be better off if we were a quieter and a little, and let other countries have their power balances. We need a balance of power between people, between countries too, as in a family. So if you enjoyed this little segment from the podcast, click over here to watch the entire podcast. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Take care, everybody.